All right, today we're gonna be extending the Shortcuts app even further. Today we're taking a look at an app called Actions. Now, the pretty cool thing about Actions is it gives us some actions that we don't find in Toolbox Pro and that we don't find inside of Shortcuts itself. Let's take a look. All right, so here we are in Actions. If we click on an image, you can see it. The images leave a lot to be desired, I must admit, but hopefully the developer will come through and really showcase what this app can do because it's pretty awesome. But if we scroll down and we click right here where it says more, then we can scroll down here and we can see these are all the actions that we can add in. It's easily another 100 actions we add into shortcuts. So once we open up this app, again, is not as polished as Toolbox Pro, but it is nice. So as you can see, this is the entire, when we open it up, this is all we see. We have to open it up in shortcuts. So whereas Toolbox Pro gave us a nice little layout, definitions of e-action, this one doesn't do, do that, unfortunately, but it's really good all the same. Okay, so here we are at another 10 actions that I picked out with one bonus one for you down here. And we're just gonna click into number 10. And number 10, this action right here is really important because if you're like me, like for example, I did a video at the beginning of me creating shortcut videos that showed how I set up my phone to automatically text message my kids when they get out of school. The problem that I was having with that was it was no easy way for me to determine if it was a Monday or Monday through Friday when they was in school. So that I will have to stop it on Saturday and Sunday, but this allows me to ask if is Monday, if it's a day of the week, if it comes back, yes, then that shortcut runs. If it comes back, no, then that shortcut doesn't run. And that's using this action right here, which is just what did, what's the current day. How's it going, Will here. And if you into productivity and automation, then you're definitely in the right place. On this channel, I talk to you about productivity, automation, and cool tech that catches my eye just like this one. Let's talk automation. All right, so the next one you, you're you not gonna need anymore because Apple solved this in iOS 18, but in case you just want it, I added it in. And this is number nine, which is right here. This is called Authenticate. And you can see that's what it just did. It allows Face ID to confirm that it's me. And basically what it does is it returns a true statement. So if we open it up, you can authenticate and you can have it say yes or no or true or false or whatever case may be and see what the output is. And you can base an automation around this as well. So you can have it to where you're able to lock applications and things like that. But again, with this one, not so important these days. Once you hit iOS 18, you can automatically lock any app you want, do all that cool stuff and have those features baked in, which honestly works a lot better than when I was using this. So it's there if you want it though. Now, this is one that I hinted at in the last video when I was talking about understanding some actions work better than others. This action works way better than Toolbox Pro, which is asking if your phone is in dark mode or not. So if we open up this action right here, this is the action is dark mode on. Now, the reason why this is cool and the reason why most of these actions that I'm showing you right now is cool is because it directly ties into automation. You can start leveraging these different actions 100% with automation. So you want to make sure that when you're looking at these actions, you understand that, hey, these make for some really cool automation. So, for example, if I'm asking if my phone is in dark mode, it could be and I want to run my nighttime my nighttime automation, meaning my bedtime, when I'm getting ready, everything's shutting down, things like that, throwing my phone automatically into power save mode and things, all that cool stuff. And the fact that Apple automatically throws your phone in dark mode after a certain time sunset, every time at like eight o'clock, you can have an automation automatically run to check if it's in dark mode or not, and then run your bedtime one, instead of having to use an alarm to trigger that automation. So it's pretty cool. And again, this one works just the way you would think it would. So if I click on play, it's just going to give a Boolean, which is true or false. So you can see it says no, and that's correct. My phone isn't in dark mode right now. So 
that's how we would use it for an automation. Another way to trigger really cool automations for if you're doing like a meeting or something like that and you want to make sure your phone don't go off or anything like that. Like I literally just had to go to court the other day. So another automation that you can run that's really, really cool is you're able to ask if your phone is in silent mode. If your phone is in silent mode, you can have it do certain things. So let's take a look at this action. So you can see right here, it's really simple again, it's silent mode on. You can click play and again, it's gonna tell you true or false. You can see my phone is in silent mode. So since my phone is currently in silent mode, I can have that trigger a shortcut because my phone is in silent mode, then I can have it trigger something else when my phone not in silent mode. So for example, if my phone's in silent mode, nine times out of 10, I want my volume to be low, I want my screen to be dim. Certain things I want my phone to magically do on its own. And this is what this allows you to do. Really, really cool stuff. Okay, so with me getting into playing with servers and a Raspberry Pi and things like that, something that I'm always trying to figure out is, is my IP address reachable? And the cool thing is they now have an action that allows me to see that really quickly. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So number six, if we click into it, now this isn't a real IP address, but what it allows me to do is put in my actual real IP address, the port number, and I can click on play. And if I'm trying to SSH into it, it'll be able to come back and tell me if that is reachable or not. So if I get a yes back, then I shouldn't have any problems with connecting through SSH. If I do, you can see no popped up, which means that, hey, this isn't a real number. I can't reach it. So I wouldn't try to SSH into it. But if I was having problems with SSH, you can see I can set up a timeout time and all that. So you can see in this case, it tried for 10 seconds before it actually say no. I can have it shorter. I can have it longer. It's really, really cool, especially when you get off into, you know, playing with Linux and all that other stuff. Must have for me. Have you ever took a picture of a flyer just to get some information off of it later and you notice that picture has a QR code on it and you wish you could scan it, but you can't because it's on your phone? If so, this shortcut is for you. So number five, when we click into it, you can see that this action allows me to scan QR codes on whatever photo I have. So right now to demonstrate it, I have it searching is pulling the last photo out of my photos library and is gen whatever it pulls is on pull it and then i have it opening up a url so we're going to click play and you can see that it pulled the url from that code so now if we come back over here we can close that back out and you can see how useful that action will be i personally use this action a lot more than I care to admit because more times than not, sometimes I'll snap a picture of something because I don't have time to get to it, like maybe an ad on YouTube or something like that, or somebody got the QR code popping up and I don't really have time to deal with it right then and there. So I'll snap a picture of it. And then later on in my downtime, I'll go back and run this shortcut. I use this a lot, a lot. Now, if you need to sort things, honestly, it hasn't really been that easy to sort things using the native shortcuts app. It, I mean, you can use filter files to sort, but it's counterintuitive and most people just don't know that that's how you sort inside of shortcuts. This action makes it really easy and plain to be able to sh sort your things alphabetically or descending, ascending or descending. Let's take a look at it. So coming in at number four is going to be the sort. Now I put the ABCs up in here just to show you how this action works. So if I click on play, it's going to filter and sort. So you can see it's 26. If I do list, you can see it's sorted by alphabetical. And you can see if I did descending and I click play again, it's going to sort starting from Z and go backwards. Pretty cool stuff. This is one that I use all the time. And I'm pretty sure if you're doing any type of list, you're going to be using it too. I'm not sure if you're familiar with UUIDs. If you're not, they're pretty cool and you should check them out, especially inside of draft. You can literally use a UUID number. That's a unique identifier to that piece of content and send that entire article over to craft, which is what I do all the time. But in this specific one, I want to show you how you can generate your own. So let me show you. So number three is a UUID generator. So if you click play, it generates 
unique identifier. So you can drop this wherever you want to drop it, knowing that the chances of it generating another one just like this and clashing with one you already have is slim to none. This is like a unique identifier key, if you will, to identify a unique piece of content. It's pretty cool. And if you don't know about UUIDs, it's worth taking 10 minutes to learn all about them and how you can leverage them inside of your shortcuts. Hands down, pound for pound, one of the best ways to run an automation is going to always be using Booleans, meaning you ask shortcuts, A, is this true or false? It comes back with an announcer. And based on true or false, you do something with that information. Let's take a look at number two. So here's number two right here. And as you can see, number two is a Boolean. All it does is tell you true or false. That's it. This I'm telling you is amazing. I know you're probably looking at it like it's super simple, but I can't tell you how many times I have an action that I want to know or a shortcut that I want to run and I have to figure out, okay, is it yes or no? Then I have to go in and type in yes or no and see what is returning. But with this, it automatically does it for me. So I don't have to deal with that. All I have to do is click on what I want to do if it's true or false and then otherwise do absolutely nothing or otherwise do something totally different. This right here comes in clutch, seriously. So number one is one that I have been waiting patiently to be able to figure out how to do inside of shortcuts. And if it's already a way to do this inside of shortcut natively, then I mean, it's very well hitting because I did not find it. And I spent the whole weekend at one point looking for it when I first got deep into shortcuts. So technically it might have updated since then, but at the time I didn't find it. And the fact that I can easily do it now is amazing. So here's the deal. If you run a lot of lists or you use a lot of lists and you want to clean up that list, it's really, really easy to do that using number one. So let's take a look at it. All right, so you already know we can sort, but the other thing we can do is we can remove duplicates. Now, if I click play, you can see it says Chicago, Kansas City. Fun fact, I was born in Kansas City. You can see it says Iowa, Kansas City, Iowa, Chicago. If I click play, you can see that it cleans up the list by removing duplicates. Now, I get it. You might say, you know, Booleans and removing duplicates are super duper simple, but when you're messing with a lot of data, especially as a content creator, or you're playing with a lot of different keywords, trying to do your market research and things like that. These things come in clutch, like seriously, they really do come in clutch. So these are my main 10. Now, let me show you the bonus one for the last one. And for the bonus, this one is if you ever use the wait time, you're going to enjoy this one, especially if you hate having to wait three seconds or a second for something that doesn't take that long. Let's take a look. So you can see this one allows you to wait in milliseconds. So the way milliseconds work is 500 milliseconds is half of a second. So 250 milliseconds is one fourth of a full second. So you can get very granular in your wait time when it comes to using this shortcut. I really, really like this action a lot because I don't no longer have to do two seconds or three seconds. If I want one and a half seconds, I could just do one and a half seconds versus having to sit down and wait a full two seconds or four seconds when it really doesn't need all that time. Might sound, you know, petty in the grand scheme of things when it comes to your shortcuts, but I'm telling you, it makes a difference. Try it. As always, make sure you go inside of actions and look at it. Meaning like if we go up in here right now and we just go over to, well, we can stay in there and let's just type in actions. And make sure you look through here because there are a ton of actions up in here and you might find something that catch your eye that you've been looking for that you haven't been able to find. You might find it in here. So make sure you don't just stop at these 11, but you go deeper inside the app. With that being said, if you didn't catch my video on toolbox pro actions, make sure you check that one out next. So next time later.